All right, welcome to writeshawn.com. Uh, today's question, which I'm actually not done writing, but I just felt like doing the video anyway. Um, it's from my friend Mike. He started a company called Pack Protocols, and he says, Pack Protocols started out as a packaging engineering consultancy back in 2013. As we began to gain clients, it was noticeable after work was completed, the majority of our clients did not reach out for future work. Um, so basically, he asked, what are the best ways to turn an existing one-time client into a repeat client. Uh, so this is, um, you know, part of this might be the industry he's in. Um, but uh, I think without diving too deep into it, there's a few things you can do. And that, so I go over it in this post. Um, I recommend doing email marketing, um, but in a smart way. And I kind of say, so first of all, everyone that, that, you run into can be on your email list. It doesn't have to be a customer. It could be some people that you you've met through networking, people who have uh, maybe had, who've inquired about things. It's people in your industry, right? Even people like a good idea too is to think about your power partners, people that you 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 work with that aren't direct competitors. Um, so in his industry, you know, he might actually be a great power partner for 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 pack protocols might actually be an actual uh, packaging company that makes packaging, like uh, cylinder tubes and, and caps for those tubes and cardboard boxes and all that stuff. Um, maybe a pallet company, like all those people are in your circle of influence. And so they can kind of all be in, in your in your email lists. They can be on different lists actually. So anyway, but let's just focus on customers or people that, you know, prospects I would ask them you know can I I would say this to them at some point I go can I email you from time to time with ideas and tips that I think will help you that's better than asking like hey can do you want to be in my newsletter list because most people don't want extra email they don't need so this will just bump up the conversion rate and then what you do is uh, you got to find a good frequency to email out like you don't want to email these people every day probably maybe maybe for your industry it's once a month or bi-monthly you'll have to kind of figure out what works best but the first thing you want to do is you don't want to just send out promotional emails you just want to be a resource and so like in his industry a lot of people uh, might need information on regulations and how to comply uh, about new materials that are coming out and like things that will lower costs and things that will save um, packages from getting damaged there's a lot of information in this world it's actually very very interesting there's also a lot of uh crossover with the design world there's very interesting packaging design things that happen and i think that's great email content it's very it's like there's wonderful things to look at really beautiful designs i think that's good material you can use so the idea is you keep them informed and engaged and excited with all this content you become the expert in this industry you know about everything packaging all the stuff that's happening all the regulations all the rules all the codes all the new awesome package design companies like you want to try to be the center of this universe so you start curating this content and collecting it, and you email them out once in a while. Now, in your email, you should have a call to action and say something like, you know, if you guys ever have, um, if you ever need, you ever need advice or like a suggestion for something, please just, you know, feel free to contact me. And there's no no catch, no obligation, right? And make that really um, like a well-known uh, call, like a very prominent big call to action, not like gross or anything, but obvious. Um, and then finally, you know, you can use all this content as blog posts. Why not just, as you're writing these emails, stick them in your blog post later, and then you'll get some search engine traffic, so that can't hurt. Um, another thing I was saying in this post is that sometimes you don't want to use, like, a typical email template, like a MailChimp template or whatever. Sometimes it makes sense just to have it send out, like, a, a, a very basic Gmail-looking, like, personal email. This Arial font, like, 12-point, no frills. It doesn't look promotional at all. It looks super personalized. You can actually have that automated, or not really automated, but you can send that out in a blast. Just make it look like a personal email. Um, sometimes those just, they work way better, especially if the language and the tone come off as like, I'm just talking to you like a normal, it's a normal conversation. It's not like, hi, welcome to 2018. We have a bunch of great things we want to offer you. I mean, maybe stay away from that style of email. Um, the idea here is as you're, you know, as you're, you're giving, you know, your, your, your entire base more touches, there's more opportunities for conversations. There's more um, people reaching out to you going, hey, you know, actually, we, we have a big job coming up. We need you to help out. Things like that. Um, 
So, and it kind of leads into like just, you know, reaching out to old clients. Like maybe you should just uh, pick up the phone once a week and give everyone a call to see how they're doing. Um, some people bottle wine during the holidays, kind of keep up the whole client relationship going because that's what this really is, is relationships. Um, I would hire like a really good salesperson, like maybe a, a, someone that's really good on the phone um, to be a relationship manager. Not really to be like a, a dial for dollar salesperson per se. You can try it, but someone just to do the phone calls with, for you is really good on the phone. Maybe they just work once a week and they help just kind of like, you know, nurture your list, uh, but on the phone. Um, that the right person there can do amazing things. You'd be surprised. It's just tricky to find that that really good, that really that person that's a sweet phone talker. Uh, also, you, you should do exit interviews. Anytime a customer, like, anytime you're done with a job, especially with a first-time customer, you should ask them, you, you know, like, how was your experience with us? What did you like about us? What could be improved? Was our pricing reasonable? I'm sure you can think of, like, a ton of questions. This is really key. Um, honestly, you, if, if you don't do this, you don't have, your business design isn't complete. Like, you need this to steer. So, Make sure you're always doing this and collecting this data. And, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions that might hurt your feelings and stuff like that. It's really key. Uh, one of the finally thing, the final thing I said was uh, focus on branding and business design. I talk about this in other posts a lot. Um, your brand experience isn't. It's not just your logo. It's like everything about your company, like how you answer the phone, what it looks like when you go to your website, what your invoices look like. Um, you really like the more time you spend on that stuff, people just get a really good impression of like you run a great ship and they trust doing business with you. And it's these little things that add up. So st make sure you're not doing the technical work, Mike, if you can. You should hire someone to do the technical work. You should be focusing on this other stuff. Um, Larry Kim says this is like one of the greatest growth hacks ever. Um, when people trust your brand, the conversions are high, right? When they know about you. So, in, and this also goes to, like, you should be everywhere in your industry. Like, people should see you at trade shows eventually. People should see your logo. Anytime they're doing any package design research, like, you know, pack protocols always comes up type of thing. I and mean, it always looks sharp. And they have amazingly great content. And just the whole experience that I, you get with them is amazing. Even in this industry, that might not be super sexy. Um, finally, I had a little, I thought of something funny. I, I used to, actually, Mike was my roommate at one point, And so he would tell me, uh, about his work and what he would do. And this is before he started his, his company and he would talk about how they would test pallets of, of merchandise and like drop it and see if the packaging would keep the contents safe. And we used to get a lot of cool freebies from this world like because all that stuff after they would drop test it was free to take home sometimes. So we get bottles of wine and pistachios. It's kind of funny. Um, but there's fails, like sometimes, you know, pallets break and things spill open and that's part of the testing of packaging. So if you, I would just take your phone and shoot video and then, you know, you're going to collect a bunch of pretty interesting content. Like people, I think, kind of get addicted to watching things break and spill open and you could just upload this to YouTube and it's kind of fun viral content to watch. I don't know. Maybe, maybe in, in, in reality it won't be as great as I think it might be, but who knows? Maybe that'll be fun. Okay, I hope this helps, Mike. Feel free to ask me anything, anytime. All right, bye.